Manufacturing is an important sector in the economy and a significant employer, but the sector has faced a number of headwinds with electricity supply scarcity a key one. The national lockdown last year also put the sector on the back foot, although it's steadily recovered since. So how can the business environment be improved to propel the fortunes of the sector? I'm joined by Philippa, Philippa Rodsteff. Uh, she's executive director at the Manufacturing Circle. Thanks very much, Philippa, for joining us. We know that the manufacturing sector had a tough time last year, and uh, we do hear that there's some improvement, even when we look at the PMIs, which sort of look at the future of manufacturing. Those seem to be registering positive numbers. Where are we right now? Right now, manufacturing is doing the best that it can to continue to be the engine to drive the economy. Um, however, we, we face challenging situation, uh, challenging situation. Um, on the demand side for manufactured products, um, we do have reduced demand, and that's a function of um, low GDP growth in the economy albeit that, that we're seeing improvement there. And then on the supply side, there are also um, various challenges by way of inputs, as, as you note, energy supply, reliable energy supply, both directly from our state utility as well as um, you know, certain issues as far as municipal service delivery is concerned. So, so challenges, but as always, opportunities, and those as a manufacturer circle is uh, our areas where we really try to focus on. Yes. Now, we know last year and even now, there's been a huge shift towards digi uh, digitization, uh, people moving online and so on and so forth. In the Afri in the South African context, people are very worried that about the loss of jobs in the manufacturing sector. But the temptation for manufacturers, manufacturers could be, of course, to move to more uh, mechanized type of manufacturing. What's the status in that regard? In South Africa, and, and even before COVID, um, the balance between mechanized and, and or, or fourth industrial revolution type um, um, thinking versus um, labor intensive manufacturing has, has always been uh, an area for discussion. And um, what we do find is that, um, you know, there will always be opportunities for, for, for employees and, and for jobs in the manufacturing sector. Um, and where there are opportunities for mechanization, um, what is required is employees with um, uh, um, certain skills. So although we may lose um, uh, jobs in, in certain parts of, of the manufacturing sector value chain, there are other jobs um, you know, uh, that, that will be required with, with a slightly different skill set. So that's a balance that we always need to be mindful of. Um, and it's, it's very much connected to skills. And what are the skills that we need for, for manufacturing as, as systems progress? Yeah. Now, one of the biggest bogeys for the manufacturing sector, as I mentioned in the introduction, is the scarcity of electricity supply. How is the sector dealing with that? And what does it mean for, for your more smaller manufacturers, you know, where the margins are that much tighter? Well, um, Energy and, well, electricity and, and reliable supply of electricity is very important, um, is a very important input to the manufacturing sector. Um, and, and irrespective of whether it's a, it's a large or, or a small company, um, you know, to be able to, to plan and have reliable supply is, is very important um, and does comprise, you know, a, a significant portion of many manufacturers' cost bases. So, so it's really, um, you know, it's, it's a case of understanding what our utilities restructuring plans entail uh, so that we can look to hopefully um, sustainable um, electricity supply going forward. And, and what that means um, in addition to what that means from a tariff point of view. Um, because, you know, at the moment, if we've got unreliable supply, um, and although the tariffs are at a certain level, um, costs end up um, um, impacting negatively in cases where manufacturers might need to resort to the interim to, to diesel, uh, um, uh, generation, uh, diesel power generation, generators or, in fact, loss production. So it's, it's, 
it's a situation where we need to understand what the plans are going forward from a restructuring point of view, sustainability of the utilities, that we can um, be uh, better uh, uh, affirmed and, and, and com comforted by the fact that we, we could look to hopefully more reliable energy. Supply. Yeah, you did touch on the domestic demand situation. Obviously, that has been uh, that has come under pressure uh, given the impacts of COVID-19 and so on. Uh, many people losing their jobs. Although we have seen an uptick in job uh, jobs job creation since uh, the second quarter of last year. But just tell me in terms of the cost that you touched on, to what extent do you think the manufacturing sector is going to be in a position to pass on any increasing costs that come through the system onto a very distressed end consumer? That's, that's a very good question, and I think one that's on um, the minds of, of many people um, in terms of, you know, the, the balance uh, um, uh, according to cost plus inflation related um, increases in the, um, you know, in, in, in the manufacturing process and what can be passed on or, or absorbed by the end consumer. And, um, you know, it's a case of really understanding the implications, I would say, um, by various sectors, by various value chains and, and perhaps um, you know, and unpacking that in a little more detail because it is a very, um, it's a very pertinent question in terms of driving up um, production and being able to do so. But um, what does that do from a cost point mm. of view? Philippa, thank you so much for your time and your insights there. Uh, Philippa Rodseth, she's executive director at the Manufacturing Circle.